Hey everyone, I'm Jay from Boulder Creek Railroad, and in this video I'm going to be showing you all the locomotives that are in my Steam roster. I have quite a few of these, so let's get right on into it. Okay, so let's start off with the uh, one and only DCC locomotive in my roster. This is a DCC sound equipped model from Bachman. It is a Bachman Berkshire locomotive painted for the Nickel Plate Road. It's painted number 759, which is a locomotive still in existence today. Um, I believe it was one of the first uh, loco steam locomotives to ever uh, run for like tourist service on a main line in like a very long time, and that's what kind of made it famous. Um, it no longer operates today, I believe there's an issue with the boiler, and so uh, it remains um, in uh, standing uh, but not operating condition um, at a uh, railroad museum in Pennsylvania. Uh, I believe that they, people have been wanting them to get this locomotive uh, fixed up, but they haven't uh, because I believe it's just because we already have another, another Berkshire locomotive in operational condition, so it's just kind of... I guess the idea is that it's kind of dumb to fix another one, uh, but I think it, it'd be really great to uh, get, see this locomotive running again. Um, it's a very nicely detailed model from Bachman, uh, probably one of their best. I believe it's the first model that they ever put their DCC sound in for end scale. So a uh, pretty interesting uh, fact there. Um, it has a Mars light, uh, backup light in the tender, uh, so white wall tire, uh, white wall wheels. So. Yeah, very interesting model here. Uh, again, it's the only DCC sound locomotive in my roster, so... Uh, yeah, so let's move on to uh, some of the other locomotives in my collection. This next locomotive is probably my favorite locomotive uh, for mainline steam. Uh, it is number 4449, uh, the Daylight GS4. Uh, this locomotive is a Cato model. It is one of the newer models and you can tell the difference between the older and newer variants by the lettering on the tender. So as you can see some of the specific lines, that's what the locomotive would have looked like when it was in service with the SP. If it just says in big white letters on the orange line here, if it just says Southern Pacific in huge big bold letters, that means that the locomotive is one of the original variants uh, that Kato did a while back, and that means that it cannot have DCC installed in it because there's like this weird issue with the back driver. So this one is designed so it can be installed with DCC drop in decoder that it does have. Um, this is a beautiful operating locomotive, super quiet. The Mars light operates, which is really cool. The, uh, these little uh, classification lights light up. It's very, 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 very nice model, and I'm so happy that I have it. Um, I really want to get it to see some sound installed, so I might get that. Might happen pretty soon. Actually, I'd really like to see this uh, locomotive all uh, uh, you know, sounding great and running down the rails for DCC. So uh, yeah. So let's move on to the next locomotive in my collection. This next one is the biggest locomotive in my collection. It is a Bachman 484 Northern locomotive. Uh, these have a very bad reputation. Just, uh, they came out with these models way, way, way back in the day for end scale and they ran horribly and they were really loud and the gears had the white, the white gears that would uh, crack over time. And so these have a really bad reputation, but uh, this is one of the newer versions. Uh, it runs quite uh, quietly and smoothly, um, and uh, it is DC. Uh, the headlight still has is still horrible. It's very poorly lit, and uh, it lights up based on how much current is in the tracks. Not constant lighting like uh, the GS4 is pretty much uh, constant lighting. Um, Another weird issue is that they kept the same tooling from back in like, like 1980 or 1970, so it doesn't look great. But what I did to it is I weathered it uh, quite extensively too. It was my first steam locomotive weathering, so I was very scared to do it because I was afraid I was going to get the model uh, really screwed up looking. But actually, I find that the weathering really adds a ton of detail to this model. It really raises out that horribly molded detailing and actually makes it look semi decent. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a good model, um, it's pretty cheap too, you can probably get them for like 98 bucks, it's a strong polar, and if you do some weathering and if you're good, like really good, some detailing, this could become a very good addition to your roster. Okay, so this next locomotive is a interesting piece, actually. This is a model by IHC, 
Uh, I've never seen any IHC model in N-Scale before, and I picked this guy up all the way in Skagway, Alaska at the White Pass in Yukon Route. As you can see, it's painted number 73 of the White Pass. Um, it came in this really cool looking box that had a, a good like painting or art of uh, the actual number 73, which is a Mikado like this model, but th it's it, this looks nothing like the actual Mikados that were used on the air gauge. This is just like a standard USRA Mikado. So it's not, it looks absolutely nothing like it, but it, it's an all-metal model, has uh, this the metal boiler, uh, good bell detail, nice lighting, uh, the drive the drivers are very nice, I love the, the painting on the tender. Um, this model looks eerily similar to a model power Mikado, and so I'm kind of thinking that IHC somehow copied model power, or they just used model power Mikados and put them in their boxes, I think. Um, I could be wrong, but they look so similar. Uh, even motors and the, uh, the model power Mikados had metal boilers that looked exactly like this. So I'm, I'm like 98% sure they are model power Mikados, just with a different label, but uh, nonetheless, this is a very great operational model. Pick up from uh, all four drivers and uh, pick up on the wheels in the back of the tender. So great model, um, runs great, super quiet, pulls a lot of cars, and very interesting because it's an IHC model. This is a very cool model. This is an Atlas Shea. It is uh, painted for Eastside Logging Company number 107. I think I did a little history. Um, Eastside Logging Company number 107, first of all, one didn't look like this. Uh, this is just the standard model they painted 107, but I think I read somewhere that it was the first uh, Shea ever built uh, in like uh, a standard prototypical practice. Because I know that um, they made like tiny custom Shea's that were like prototypes, but this was the first one that they made in, in the huge manufacturing factories that was like, uh, that they made copies of. So this is, just, that's just, you know, lettering, but I, I could be wrong on that, but I read somewhere. Anyway, this is a very cool model because uh, all this little drive shaft detail, it rotates and moves. So all these, uh, all the wheels here have uh, bevel gears on them. All these little uh, universal joints work. The pistons don't go up and down, but here they, I guess they do, they kind of go up and down, but you can't really see it there. But uh, very interesting model, super detailed, LED lighting front and back. Um, I'd love to get DCC in this, and I've seen some videos of people who have put DCC. I even saw a video with DCC sound, but these are just tiny locomotives, and because they have no tender and no space in the oil bunker in the back, because that's where the motor is, it's pretty much impossible to get DCC, uh, let alone DCC sound inside of one of these units without extensive, probably framework and shell work. So. Is this guy, even though as beautiful as it is and as great of a runner as it is, I'll probably never run it on ECC. But um, it's still in my collection. It's one of my favorite locomotives because I'm a huge fan of geared locomotives, and this is the only geared locomotive ever made in plastic from any manufacturer in N scale. So um, good job to Atlas on this, and uh, if you're a fan of any logging rowers or even just locomotive in general. This is an amazing locomotive to add to your collection. Alright, so this is a little bit of an interesting story about this one. This is a Bachman 440, um, originally painted uh, number 119. This is one of the newer versions of um, the 440, but this, it never looked like you know, the, the way it's painted now. So, when I was younger, I used to, uh, I, well, I still am, I'm infatuated with uh, the Disneyland Railroad. And so I really wanted to have one of the Disneyland Railroad models. And uh, a couple of companies made them. Well Smith made a very beautiful model of the Lily Bell, uh, which is Walt's uh, small seven and a half inch gauge locomotive that he used to ride on. Um, and scaled up, they had one uh, which is called the uh, CK Holiday. And that locomotive is the one at Disneyland. They also made a version of that. But those locomotives have, you could only get those at the Disneyland park. And uh, whenever they show up on eBay, they're like $400 and they're Atlas models. But uh, Bachman also did uh, this one here, which was the EP Ripley. 
uh, which is a different Steam look from those. It's a 4 4 of Disneyland. But, uh, you know, the, the Bats comes in a train set that they made and that you could only get at the parks like 20 years ago or something like that. And it's it, it, you, those go for like a thousand bucks. So I decided just to paint mine when I was really little. Or, well, not really little, but when I was younger. Um, and I did this horrible paint job. Honestly, I was completely butchering it. Um, but I don't run it anymore. Uh, it has track. It's supposed to have traction tires on all four uh, drivers, but um, the traction tires broke off. And then I bought replacements and I put those on, and the replacements broke off. So I was just like, I'm, I'm just done. I'm not gonna try to try to fix this locomotive. So um, it sits on a small piece of track in a railroad park next to my yard. So uh, it's on display on my railroad all the time. But uh, yeah, if you're gonna get a 440 in scale, just buy the Atlas one because even though they don't make them anymore, they run so much better and they look so much better. So just get one of those. All right, and here's the last locomotive in my collection. Uh, this is a custom locomotive I did. The reason this whole channel exists, um, here it is. It's the uh, Climax locomotive that I completely reframed and designed. Um, I just took a Kato chassis uh, for one of the little trams and then designed a whole 3D printed locomotive fit right on top of it. So, uh, yeah, it's missing a smokestack. I don't know what happened there. I was supposed to have a smokestack, but uh, I just find another one and find it or whatever happened to it. But anyway, uh, yeah, so here it is. It's just the small little uh, Climax locomotive. You can see the cylinders on the side, it has the little detail. Um, yeah, so uh, I have files for this. You can go to my website uh, and there's the links to them there or you can go to my uh, Cult 3D uh, page where I have all the files there. So uh, yeah, so all of these go to my website. Um, there's not really any other Climax locomotive in N-Scale. I think there was a Japanese brass company that made one, but they were made in like extremely limited numbers, probably like under 100 of them or something. And they were mainly kits. And the kits are like two grand because they're so rare and everyone wants a decent Climax. So, I mean, whatever. But yeah, so here you go. That's my Climax locomotive. Pretty interesting model and yeah, so. There you go, that's uh, the locomotive, uh, that, those are the steam locomotives that I have. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the locomotives that I'd like to get that are steam locomotives in the future.